Hey guys, welcome to my studio. I thought I would paint a little painting and just see what I can come up with today. And I wanted to invite you guys in and just watch my process. So the first thing I do before any painting, I tone the canvas. So I'm going to tone it with some burnt sienna and a little gamzol. And this just really basically gets rid of the white canvas. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So this really, this process, it's kind of like um, stretching or warming up before you exercise because it kind of gets you in the mood to paint and you know just get you ready i kind of enjoy this process sometimes when i'm not painting i'll just come up here and i will just tone canvases so i'll have them ready for whenever the urge strikes to paint so get all over just kill the white and get a nice middle tone value on this canvas. Okay, once I tone the canvas, I just take a dirty paper towel and I just kind of rub it into the weave like this. And I kind of create a little bit of texture with it. So I rub it in and then I just kind of pat it. I like to let some of my undertoned canvas show through. Then you have some interesting kind of an interesting look to your painting. So I don't want it to look, so I'll smooth it out just a bit, but it gives it kind of a, kind of a nice texture like that. That looks pretty cool. So if some of that shows through, I just like the look of it. All right, so I think I'm going to paint a ginger jar. I'm gonna do a ginger jar and maybe a couple of lemons with some eucalyptus. I like to, divide my canvas into thirds. It's the rule of thirds. The thing about art is you need to learn the rules so you can break the rules, you guys. I've always been a rule breaker, so that's right down my alley. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna divide it into thirds and it doesn't have to be even. Just kind of, you know, you can just eyeball it a little. Just divide it into thirds because that helps you with your placement on your canvas because sometimes you tend to think you have more room on your canvas than you actually do. So I'm just gonna divide it into thirds, you know, just by eyeballing it. Like that. And so this is the way I decide where I'm going to put my items on my painting. So. I'm gonna, I've got my phone right here, you guys. It's Autumn. She's texting me. She sent me a picture of one of her new handbags and she really needs my approval in her life. So Autumn's here with me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to decide where I want my ginger jar to go and I want it right about here. Okay, there we go. All right, so I want it right about here. Right about here. This is where the ginger jar is gonna live. Kinda, and I'm not worried about the drawing right now. I'm just thinking about size and placement. So it's gonna be right about, right about here. The bottom, the top, the sides. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and Secure this down with a cast shadow. You know, every artist has their way of doing things. And I always like to secure anything I'm painting down with a cast shadow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that right off the top, right there, cast shadow. All right. I'm gonna pull you guys a little closer. Woo. 
All right, how's that? Now, I'm going to have a lemon right about here on this plane, kind of behind it, right here. So I'll go ahead and do a cast shadow and secure the lemon so it's a little bit behind it, right here. And then here, another lemon kind of in this area, right here. So what I like to do is just get a towel and just kind of rub some of this out. Cast shadow under the lemon. And I know right now it probably doesn't make any sense at all, but I promise it will. We'll go ahead and put a little bit of the shadow in the lemon. Shadow here. A shadow. This is a shadow that defines the form. This is the cat shadow. Okay. All right, so some of this I'm just gonna like paint and some of it I'll tell you what I'm doing, but in the beginning I'll go ahead and tell you. Now this shadow is a, it defines the form and I always like to connect the shadow part of the jar to the cast shadow. So that makes your painting more unified. You always wanna connect things and unify them when you can. You guys, I am painting, I'm talking to you guys, and I'm talking to Autumn Beckman. She's, she always has to have my approval. She just can't make a move without me. I really don't know how she made it without me, really. She's, you guys, she's very attached to me. Have I told you guys that before? Very attached. When we start painting, we always start with big shapes. You can see that that is going to be a ginger jar. Okay, there's always a bit of the background shadow when the form is turning. And I don't think I'm gonna to get too technical. I'm starting to right now, but I'm kind of thinking out loud. Now, I'm going to have some eucalyptus coming out, kind of going like this. A few little leaves here. I'm just thinking about my composition. Another one here. I love eucalyptus. Maybe another pretty one here. Um, Part of one here, a bit of it, you know, in this area. Um, how about some coming around here on the table with a leaf? I think that would be pretty, like really pretty right here. Um, here. Here. Just something kind of like that. Maybe. We'll do a bit of a tabletop edge right about here. Here's Autumn again, you guys. Guess what? She got a new bag. She needs my approval. Okay, let me text that. I approve. So I'm going to start with the background. I think I'm going to go with a warm tone, kind of a dark reddish, um, umbery looking background because the ginger jar itself is going to be cool. So that, um, if you go with warms and cools, then you have more color harmony in your painting. So I'm going to mix up a really pretty warm background color. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on this background. I have kind of a dark, warm color for the background. I'm just gonna go around some of the stuff. So just go around it. start going a little bit kind of a lighter value toward the middle it's just a nice warm 
background and it's going to complement the cool tone of the ginger jar. At least that's my plan. When I do still lifes, I like to do them, paint them very loosely and just really not fuss. I hope this is picking up okay. All right, so I've been painting away and my battery went dead. I didn't know. Autumn has me a little distracted. She keeps texting me. All right, so I have a warm background and that's what I want, but sometimes I'll go back and change it up a bit, but we'll leave it like it is right now. It's not that big a deal. And I'm going to go ahead and try to work on the shape of the jar. All right, so a lot of times I'll just dip my brush into some Gamsel, and that's a paint thinner, odorless paint thinner. And I'll just kind of erase. I'll use my brush kind of like an eraser and kind of carve out the shape of the jar. I don't always do it like this, but it's a good way. Just dip it in that odorless mineral, mineral spirits and just kind of carve it out. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this. It also helps get rid of some of the color. So where the light hits the vase, it will look more like porcelain. And I kind of think I want my jar just a little bit wider. So just carve it out. What I do to one side, I'll do to the other because I want it to be proportional. Okay, so right now I'm just kind of working on the tabletop, trying to decide where I want the light to hit, things like that. And I'm not going to really dilly-dally too much about this, so I think I'm going to go ahead and start working on the ginger jar. I've got the shape of it, and I'm pretty happy with it. And so I think we're going to go ahead and start working on the jar. All right, where's my palette knife? So the first thing I like to do, I like to go ahead and put a highlight on because it helps me determine what um, value the, the jar needs to be. If I have the dark value and a light value, then I can better assess the value for the ginger jar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a bright highlight there. Maybe one here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the color for the jar and it's gonna be a really like light, kind of a minty green color because I'm gonna go back over it with some blue for the decoration of the jar. And that way with the highlights, it'll make it look more like porcelain, if that makes any sense. All right, so I have a really, look at that. It's just a really light minty green and I'm gonna put it on pretty thick and lighter up here at the top. Just lay my brush strokes down, kind of working around that highlight and I may readjust that and just carve out the shape of the jar, okay? Let me try to zoom in. <laughs> Keith is downstairs, let me close the door.
Okay, so as I work my way down the form, I'm going to add a little bit more blue because I want it to be a little darker as I work my way down. Just a little. Just gradually darken the value as I work down. You guys, my husband is downstairs putting a bracket on our wall for a new TV. So if you hear a lot of noises, that's Keith. <laughs> All right. I have to make a transition here because it's going into shack. There we go. Okay. So the form is turning into shadow. This is the lip of the jar. As you can see, I'm gonna have to add that highlight back. But never fear, I can do it. You want big bold highlights? and thinner shadows. I want it just a little bit darker than this value, not too dark. All right, so I need some transitional, maybe some background color here for a shadow, maybe some of the background. You guys, I'm just thinking out loud, but that helps it it's turning into shadow, so I need to put some of that color back into it because this is porcelain and there's a reflection there. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the lemons, but I'm also going to paint a reflection of the lemon into the jar. So it's really cool, I love this part. Let me clean my brush really well. All right guys, here goes, here goes nothing. Let me put a little bit of glow into the ginger jar. And then we're gonna work on those beautiful lemons. Let's just put it on there. Maybe I'll use my palette knife to do it. What are you doing, you ask? <laughs> just a little bit of glow reflection. Start with my reflection. Right here. Maybe here. Come in with some cad yellow. I don't have the shape right, so I can just adjust it to be more. It's just paint, guys. You can always change it. A little bit of the shadow under here. And you know that little nub at the end? Let me load my brush. Get a little nub at the end of the lemon, kind of like that. And There's that little nub. And the beauty of this underpainting 
you can kind of mix it together to make the shadow with the yellow. So see how that works? Just right there. So you have a transition. All right, so now I'm going to work on the eucalyptus and I'm going to mix kind of a minty color green. So let's just kind of, yeah, that's good. Okay, let's lay it down like that. Just kind of loosely lay it down. I like for some of the background to mix in with it. If you don't like it, just wipe it away. That's the beauty of oil painting. See now, I'm just going to kind of blend some of this. I don't know if it's showing up as well as I'd like for it to. You know, and it doesn't have to be exact. I like just little indications uh, of stems and leaves. Every artist has their own style and it takes you a while to kind of develop your own techniques. And like I said earlier, we learn the rules so we can then break the rules. I find that very exciting. I've always been a rule breaker, guys. <laughs> That's probably not the best thing to admit. So that looks better. Somehow I'm gonna have to get this down to about a 15 minute video. So I've been working on this painting, I guess about an hour, a little, little longer than an hour. Okay, so take a look. And I have been working on the background a bit. I wanted to add a bit of a glow. And now I'm going to do the fun part, which is the decorative part of the vase. So I like to use the tip of my brush to do this, to put the decoration. Just load it with paint like that and just start working on the decoration. This reminds me of one of those old jars that maybe your grandmother had. And just kind of roll it around, try to come up with some kind of a pattern. Come in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. You've seen jars like this and like teapots and things like that. With the beautiful blue patterns. It's just easier to do it with the bottom part of the brush. It's just the way I do it. I just roll it and twist it. Uh. 
All right, so I think that's all I'm going to do. There's a little bit more work to be done on this painting. I've been working on it probably two and a half hours, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, let me know. I can do more painting videos. I can do demos. I can do instructional videos. Anything you guys would like to see, just let me know. And I do hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys back again next week. Bye-bye.